Hi everybody, good evening. Um, it's Frances Okoro, the lady behind www.imperfectlyperfectlives blog. Okay, I mentioned on Monday when I came back online that I um, I'm planning on doing a series of videos um, for a series of things I wanted to talk about. Olola Day um, commented on Monday's post that um, she was hoping that I would share some things from the conference at just the one I attended. I, I said I was at, going to be at on. on so i wasn't going to blog on anything from the conference but it has been on my heart to share a bit of some stuff and it um lines up with what we did in the conference the conference was all about uh, the theme of the conference was the kingdom of god the kingdom of god now um I pass out from um, NYC on Thursday. Yay! Okay. And as expected, everybody around me, all um, Batch C coppers right now, everybody's either sending in CVs or asking you what you want to do after you pass out. Let me backtrack a bit for us to understand where I'm going to with this, the kingdom of God, where I'm going to with this. At the beginning of the year, or let me just say, when I, I've shared the story about how I came to Christ before, um, wrong relationship, God, I had to go back to God and all that. When I came to God, I became, I, I, I got sucked in into this life in Him that I didn't want any of myself to remain. So I think about 500 level or so, the I had this pool that told me God had a purpose for my life and that I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what God was. I, that was even before I started the blog and everything. I just knew that there was a pool in me to go, go with what God wanted me to do. So in 2013, I started the blog. I started writing and um and then from there, it started becoming a, um, what God wanted me to say and not just any type of blog. And I was cool with that. Beginning of this year, when I came into a kid state as a youth copper, I attended the conference again. And the power of God hit me so strongly at the end of that conference. And what was in my mind, what was in my spirit was, I surrender all to you. I surrender everything to you. This year has been a year of lessons for me, a year where God has taken me through different things at different points in time that point to the fact that I self has to die for him to use me for his purposes. Now, when we went to the conference, and the conference was all about the kingdom of God, I had already been pulled that um, my part is not going to be the normal part for a lot of other persons. I had already told God, there was a time when the, the, the pull to just consecrate myself to him was so strong, I told him, I told Jesus, I'll be your hands, I'll be your feet, wherever you want me to go, I'll go, whatever you want me to do, I'll do. Now, when most of us make that kind of commitment, we do not really understand the gravity or what it means till Jesus indeed requires us to do something for him. When you talk about the kingdom of God, which is all wrapped in our purposes for God, in the kingdom, we are of the kingdom, but we are still on earth. So we have things to do for the kingdom, in the kingdom, even while we are on earth. And the deal is, we cannot run those things side by side with our own personal ambitions. So while everybody is going on and they are saying, I have to submit my CV here. I have to submit my CV there. I've asked him, 
and he's not telling me anything about the job I'm to do. He says I already have a job. Now what is this job is telling me that I already have to do? Okay, he has given me the books, he has given me the blog, but then he, he has also given me a new assignment to organize some seminars. Now, I thought the seminars were going to be... Or rather, I didn't even have any idea about seminars. I just thought after Ekiti State, I'm going down straight to Lagos. And it's still Lagos, but I have a bit of stopover in a few places that is asking me to go to and do some things. Now, the, what I want to point out here is this. The deal about the kingdom is, it's no more about you. It's now about what God wants you to do. And this is where most of us are scared to just go all out and do what God wants us to do. I think I was speaking to my friend a, 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 a while back and he was like, I think I'm, I'm going to, I'm going in, um, I want to try to go into the administration, administrative, administrative department. He's a lawyer also. I want to try this. I want to try that. I'm going for my master's and I'm looking all like a Dundee, like I don't have plans for myself like i don't i don't i don't have stuff i want to do but god hasn't told me to do any of those things now this is the thing you're following the kingdom it gets very lonely up there on saturday um when i was just i was just playing oceans where feet may feel because God has been leading me towards Peter, Peter's walk on water. And I just couldn't help but cry. It, it was almost like, God, nobody is getting this. Why is nobody getting it about your kingdom? Is it just me who understands what Matthew 6, 33 says? we try to we quote it all the time seek ye first the kingdom of god and every other thing shall be added unto you but you know seeking the kingdom first actually means that you yourself gets relegated to the background god has expressly told me that yes even if i'm a lawyer and he gives me a job today my main aim there is not even the money or salary they pay me my aim is to spread his name to do what he wants me to do in that kingdom and and that's the rat race that a lot of people in the world are being pulled into right now the rat race of how will i eat how will i feed oh, for, okay francis you're telling me i should um come in and do what god wants me to do but where is the money trust me i've thought about all those things i've thought about all those things I am at the point in my life where I know when I go home, my dad is going to ask me what's the next plan. And it's not like I don't have plans, you, you understand. It's not like God hasn't told me where he's taking me to or something. It's just way different from the plans of the rest of a lot of persons. I, 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 I I don't know how to get the point I'm trying to make to us. I, I, I was going to talk about the kingdom of God. It's it's if you have if you if you want to follow the kingdom, if you want to fulfill God's purposes for your life, then there is a necessity that yourself must die. There's no two ways about it. There's a necessity that other people are submitting CVs wherever they want to submit CVs, but you go to the Lord and you ask him, Lord, do you want me to submit my CV at so -so, so and so place? And even if you want me to submit my CV at so -so, so and so place and they will take me, what is your aim for taking me there? And then if he says my aim for taking you there is to win your boss or win a soul or, or whatever it is for the reason, then you just go, oh Lord, fine, I'll do it, I'll do it, whatever you say, I'll I'll do it whatever you say i'll do it on sat on su saturday and sunday i broke down in tears because i was factoring in what people would think or what people would say into what god has for me 
and this part of working in the kingdom you cannot you cannot you cannot think of what any other person will say i i i'm, I'm speaking to myself right here it's it's a lonely road is a lonely path is a path that will make people call you crazy i was trying to explain to my friend that at this point in time i'm not going to go along with what everybody is doing i'm not going to submit it and i know the question in his mind is process how are you going to eat how are you going to survive i know all that but when we quote matthew 6 33 we quote it in words we don't know when it really comes to living it it takes blind faith Lord, you want me to pursue the kingdom. Right now, he has asked me to hold some seminars in Delta State. You want me to hold some seminars in Delta State. How do I live? How do I survive? And you know what Jesus says? Jesus says, every other thing will be added unto you when you obey me, when you do what I want you to do. So I don't know who else I'm speaking to out there aside from myself um today is supposed to be online bible study on the blog and i admit is not a it this is not falling into one of the regular kinds of bible study we do i don't know if i'm just speaking to me because the words right here are for me also i just hope they are for someone else that day god needs people in his kingdom there are so many hearts he's he's tugging on there are so many so many souls he's tugging on but the, but but the, the thing in our hearts is lord how do i survive how do i go out there and eat so many persons are depending on me but i have decided that i would rather please god than please people When I sang, I surrender it all to you. When I still sing it, some of us just croon the words, but when it comes right down to it, it takes, it takes, it, it takes, you, you have to be careful what you say because the kingdom is all about those who have no altar of selves in their heart anymore. All they see is Jesus. All they see is God. All they see is what you want me to do. All they see is where you want me to go. All they see is whatever you say, Lord, I'll do. Jesus, I'll be your hands and your feet. Where you say I go, I go. I don't know who else understands this Matthew 6, 33. The exposition that was given on it in the conference, it was... Um, I think God knew I needed the reminder because I had already consecrated myself to him. And I, I think he knew that I would come to this point in time when he's close to passing out and the whole world, every other person seems to be all eager to move into the next phase. Some don't pray, some don't ask what you want me to do. So it seems to be a very lonely path and I know he knew that. I know there was a reason why I went to the conference my heart is just teach me lord your kingdom and for everyone out there who god is just talking on your heart to come on to him to do what he wants you to do to just lay down yourself and follow his purposes for your life i god sent someone to me on sunday who spoke to me about his own struggles today he's married with kids and he's fulfilled and god has taken care of him even if I don't see persons like that, it's in the world and God's word never fails. He says he'll take care of us. I don't know if you're passing out right now. I don't know if there's just a struggle in your soul. Like, I don't know. I don't know, Lord, what you want me to do. But I'm just so, so, so scared of doing it because it, there's no security in there. It's a walk of faith. But faith always ends. In glorious things so I just um, let's just pray together whoever you are it's a prayer for my heart is a prayer for me too in Jesus name Lord I switched on this webcam 
knowing that I had to talk about your kingdom but not really knowing what you want me to say. You also know that I am in a phase in my life where you are leading me on to walk on the waters. Um, it's a phase where it has to be all eyes on you and not on the world. Father Lord, I pray for myself and I pray for every other person under the sound of my voice, whoever they are, be they struggling, Lord, with, with just laying aside themselves and the world and going along with what you have for them. Father, give us grace to fix our sights on you. Give us grace to walk upon the waters towards where you are calling us. Help us, Lord Jesus, to lay hold of the kingdom, not of the earthly possessions. Help us, Lord, that the things and thoughts of what to eat, where to go, where to walk, Lord, we follow for force. Let our taste, let our hunger be for your kingdom. Kingdom. Let our hunger be for your purposes for our lives. Let our fulfillment, let what gives rest to our souls be your kingdom. The harvest, Lord, is plentiful. I know you need workers. It is by your mercies that you found us worthy. Now grant us grace to step into what you have for us. For each and every one of us that need to be taught more on the rudiments of your kingdom, teach us, Lord, by your spirit, teach us and help us to yield, help us to follow wherever you may lead. Thank you, sweet Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So that's just it. I, I, I just hope um, a word in there was for somebody and um i think it would be cool to rewatch this some five years from now and know that we are right on the path that god has called us into i hope you stay strong i hope you keep on holding on to jesus i hope you keep on walking in him and not in the world i'll see you later um and um this study will be on a um, pdf and then also on um the blog um i hope it's i spoke from my heart but i hope when i get down to write um it will be a bit more organized i don't know i don't know but i just uh, hope so so you can go to www.imperfectlyperfectlives.com um for more on the word on um relationships god way courtships god way on um, living purposeful lives just on being sold out to god you can go to the blog for more of those things so i'll see you guys later bye